afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and I wanted to continue a little bit today in our series on green woodworking and what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to back step one step and talk ahead a little bit so that I'm not getting 50 comments in both directions on every video that I make. First of all, the tool list that I showed you today are the five or six, seven basic tools that I said was a $50 toolkit is the basis of your kit. You're going to add to that kit, especially in a homestead type environment or a longer term type environment, you're going to add things like bracing bits, possibly T-handle augers for larger diameter holes. And we'll talk about those things as we go. Gutter adds, straight adds, different types of carving knives that are smaller for doing very, very fine carving work. Spoon knives and gouges, chisels, all of those types of things will be added to the kit as we go. But the basic level kit, if that's what you want to call it, if, if I'm handing a new person to woodworking, green woodworking, a set of tools, I'm going to say, this is the set of tools we're going to work with and we're going to build from that. So, that leads us into a couple of wooden tools that we really need to make pre doing much of anything else because we need something to bang on some of these tools with. A fro requires a maul. You can use a maul on the back side of your axe. Very similar to batoning, but you're batoning your axe or you're batoning a metal fro. You don't ever want to hit those tools with anything that's as hard or harder than they are. So you don't want to hit them with rocks. You don't want to hit them with pieces of metal like your axe or anything like that. You never want to use a metal tool to bang a metal tool. So we're going to make wooden tools for that. Now you can also make wooden wedges out of hardwood that you can help use to help you split wood if you're splitting wood lengthwise like a log. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. But before we get into the discussion of making those two types of tools, we really need to talk about trees in general for a minute because trees in general are the biggest part of the education pre-woodworking. You have to understand the tree, understand the usable parts of the tree, and understand what species of tree you're working with and why you're working with that species of tree before you start anything, to tell you the truth, because otherwise you're just walking out in the woods and haphazardly cutting something down. Now, all of this stuff I'm going to relate to you today is going to very closely be related to the Pathfinder system itself, whether it be Phase 1, 2, or 3, or the Basic Pioneer or Advanced class. Pathfinder methodology will be mixed into all of this so that you can see how it all is interwoven and interrelates to bushcraft and survival in general. Now, the first discussion I want to talk about is there really are two types of trees. You have deciduous trees and you have conifers. Deciduous trees, stay with me for a minute, deciduous trees generally are harder woods and they generally lose their leaves in the fall and winter and grow new leaves in the summer. While your evergreen conifer type trees have needles that are on the tree all year long, they're generally softer woods, and they don't shed their needles all at one time. They shed them some and then some more and then some more while they're regrowing new ones. Now, with all of that said, before you correct me, there are plenty of trees out there that contradict both of those thoughts. There's plenty of con there are conifers that do not that do lose their needles, and there are deciduous trees that do not lose their leaves. There are deciduous trees out there that are very soft, softer than almost any conifer, and there are conifers out there that are very hard, harder than many deciduous hardwood trees. So when I separate things, I'm just going to talk about hardwoods and softwoods. And when I talk about hardwood and softwood, I'm talking about the formability or the structure of that wood. Is it a softer wood or a harder wood? That's all we're going to concern ourselves with in this basic conversation. And we're going to talk about the five trees that I consider the most important trees of the eastern woodlands. And we're going to add a couple trees to that as we go. But for sake of pathfinder mentality, I want to stick with the five for the moment because they, are, they have properties of usability, edibility, medicinal value, and they're available for seasons. And that's why I want to talk about those five first. So the first one would be pine. Obviously there are several species of pine, and different pines are different hardnesses. All right? We talk about oak. We talk about poplar. 
and in this case we're talking about yellow poplar or tulip poplar which in truth is not a poplar at all it's actually a magnolia but it's called a poplar there's some more confusion for you willow and sassafras now I probably spelled that wrong but anyway the reason for these five trees is for other reasons within the Pathfinder system. So let's talk about these five first. Pine is generally considered a softwood, and in the eastern woodlands, most of them are. There's white pine, red pine, different kinds of pine. But in the eastern woodlands, they're generally a softer wood. You have oak, you have white oaks and red oaks, and they are considered hardwoods. And all of these, all of these trees have different characteristics, different pieces and parts that you can use for different projects. So it's a very long process, an arduous process to learn and understand all of these things before you ever start messing with the wood. And most of us as bushcrafters and survivalists never even thought about any of this before we started carving things out like spoons and bowls before we started burning wood in our fire, not understanding what the BTU value of that wood was, whether it's a fast burning wood, a slow burning wood, whether it's a very dense hard wood would burn hotter, or a very porous hard wood which would burn a lot quicker. Aromatics, we never think about a lot of those things when we first start out. So now we're going to go back and we're going to talk about a lot of these things as we go into this green woodworking. Willow, I'm sorry, poplar, is an extremely soft wood. All right, I'm going to put an X beside that in Eastern Woodlands. Probably the best carving wood as far as ease of use, bar none. Daniel Boone's canoe was made from yellow poplar. Willow, again, very soft. Almost to the point of being extremely soft. Eastern Woodlands, again, we're talking about, okay? Sassafras is a medium wood. It's not really a hard, hard wood, but it's not soft. It's kind of a medium in there. So if I was going to try to, again, that's an eastern woodlands. If I were going to try to put, give you three examples of a hardwood, a softwood, and a medium hard softwood, it would be sassafras would be your medium wood, poplar would be your softwood, and oak would be your hardwood. All right. Now, add to that things like hickory, which is extremely hard. We know that because make axe handles out of it. Black walnut. Another good hardwood, all right? Those are good trees to understand and know as well. But you can get away with these five for anything that you absolutely have to have. These two are available to you as well. And black walnut is one that I often place in this five, depending on where I'm at in the eastern woodlands, because some areas of eastern woodlands are very heavy with black walnut, and very light on things like sassafras or very light on things that have the same medicinal values or tannin values like possibly oak. Again, I don't want to confuse you, all right? Think about these five, add hickory and black walnut to that as far as good trees for construction projects that we're going to talk about in green woodworking. These five are the ones that we talk about most of the time in the Pathfinder system. We also touch on black walnut, and hickory is pretty much a no-brainer. Every tool you have pretty much has a hickory or an ash handle. Ash would be another good hardwood, but again, you may not have it available to you. In the eastern woodlands, these five trees are fairly available 99% of the time. Sassafras may be the only kicker, and black walnut would be a kicker as far as possibly not available as much in some areas. Out here I'm lucky, I have all of these trees. All eight of these grow out here very prevalently. So I can pick and choose what I want depending on the properties I'm looking for. In okay, I kind of closed in on this a little bit for you just so you can get a really good picture of it so that you can write it down for yourself if you want to take notes. Now, when we're talking about green woodworking, we're talking about working the wood as it's cut down. It gets cut down, we're going to use it. That's green woodworking. For carving purposes, for implements like bowls and spoons, camp hardware, things that you're going to use utilitarian to eat out of and things like that, 
you want softer woods because they're going to be easier to carve. For utilitarian purposes of tool making for handles and structural elements, you want hardwoods. So as an example, if I were out working and I broke a tool handle, I'm going to be looking for oak, I'm going to be looking for hickory, black walnut, or ash because they all are hard woods. And I want hardwood to replace a handle with. Now, again, there are different elements with white oak and red oak, but either one will work for a tool handle temporarily for sure. The softer woods and the medium woods you'd want to stay away from. If I were out in the woods looking for something to carve a spoon or a bowl or some eating utensil of some kind or something utilitarian like that, I'm going to try to find something that is a soft wood that's going to be easily carvable. So I'm going to be looking for that yellow poplar. I'm going to be looking for that willow and that pine. Those are the things I'll be looking for if I'm looking for a softer wood. Now all of this relates directly back to basic survival. If you look at this list that we just put up here and think about a bow drill fire. There's a few trees we don't have on here. Cedar is a really good one we don't have on here. Basswood. The basswood and cottonwood are both poplars anyway and we've got poplar on the list right here so but we don't have cedar on the list which is a conifer like pine all right but looking at this list if i'm looking for something that i can make a bow drill set from it needs to be a fairly soft wood so i'm going to be looking for my soft list here my pines my poplars my willows my cedars my basswoods my cottonwoods those are the things that I'm going to be looking for to make that bow drill fire with. So when you ask yourself what makes a good bow drill fire, and this is not eastern red cedar by the way, this would be white cedar is going to make a good bow drill material. Red cedar is a little bit hard. It will work, but it's harder than you want, especially if you're beginning or starting out. You really want to stay with a white cedar. So that just relates this whole thing back to survival real quick. Okay. This is a piece of probably four and a half inch black walnut from a black walnut tree I had back in the back. It was dying at the top. So I went ahead and cut it off at the base. And this is near the base here where its biggest diameter is. This is going to be the front of my mall that we're going to make. And we'll talk about that on the next video. I want to let this sink in and tomorrow we'll make this mall.